Finally, animal eye autofocus on a Nikon. Really? So Nikon just released a new firmware update for the Nikon Z50. In this update, version 2.0, they added animal eye autofocus features. Nikon promises that it will find the eyes of cats and dogs. So what I did is that I installed the firmware update on my Nikon Z50. I took my phone and I tried to record the screen of my camera so you can see how this firmware update is working in real life. I'm going to test the Animal IF on dogs, cats, and also on <laughs> ducks and geese. But I'm not sure if these animals are actually called geese in English. I don't know, please let me know in the comments. Hi, my name is Miklos Mayer and I'm a photography tour guide in Budapest, Hungary and my channel is all about photography and especially night photography and advanced editing stuff. So if you are into these kind of topics, please consider subscribing. Okay, so onto the footages I recorded with the updated Nikon Z50. Here's my brother-in-law's cat. His name is Mongo, and you can see that the camera doesn't find the eyes yet, but once the eyes can be seen, as you can see, there's not much light here. I was in a room, uh, that's why the ISO is so up. Once the eyes appear, the camera immediately finds and tracks the eyes. Even now, when the eyes can be hardly seen, the camera track the eyes and here's a close-up of that shot look how sharp and clear the eyes are so the Nikon Z50 really nailed the focus there here we are on a balcony there's a bit more light and look how easily the camera tracks the eyes again on the balcony and you can see that with my thumb I can change which eye I want to focus on with those arrows. You can see I can jump back and forth between the eyes. Here's a close-up of that shot again. Look how sharp the eyes are. Again, the cat is lying on, on the ground. It's moving a lot. This was one of the few shots where the camera didn't really catch the eyes and it was a bit out of focus but most of the other shots I took were spot on. Mind you, I was shooting with f5.6 so the depth of field wasn't that shallow but look at this, it's perfectly sharp. Playing here, playing here and I took this photo which I really really like. Look how sharp it is again. And even from the distance, the camera could spot where the eyes were and could track and focus on them. So even if the cat was further away, the camera did a good job finding the eyes. Here's another cat of my brother-in-law's and this is a Maine Coon. It's, it's, a, it's a huge cat. And look how easily the camera tracks his eyes. Sometimes it's ping-ponging between the eyes but usually it jumps automatically to the eyes closer to you again I could select which eyes I want to focus on okay. and then I wanted to see what the camera does if there's a human face and also a cat or a dog face in the frame so I asked my brother-in-law's girlfriend to, to pose with the cat, but the cat, he didn't want to cooperate at all, so <laughs> he was just putting his head down. And we tried uh, tricks. You can see that, that the camera is tracking her face and, uh, and, and her eyes. So then Moni grabbed the, the head of the cat uh, next to her, and now the camera found the cat's eyes. And now on this frame, I have Moni's uh, face over there, and I can select if I want to focus on the cat's eyes or on Moni's eyes. So now I'm focusing on the cat's eyes and if I press those arrows on the camera body, I can jump 
to the other eye, which in case are her eyes. So I think the Nikon Z50 does a really, really good job with animal IAF. All right, I think that was enough of cats. Let's see some footage with dogs. This dog is called Masley, which could translate to as good luck. And he has very bright fur and therefore his eyes pop out from his fur. So the camera has, an, has a really easy job finding his eyes. Even from the distance, it could focus on, on his eyes and you can see how sharp the photo is and the focus is spot on the eyes. You can see that, that the dog is just like one third of the frame, but the camera is still able to see both of the eyes. So then I went to the side and I wanted to take some profile shots as well. And you can see that the camera did not pick the eyes, but it automatically focused on the right area of the dog's face so I could have very sharp photos. And if I moved just a little bit um, closer to the, to the center line of his face, then and the, and the camera was able to see both of the eyes, the camera recognized the eyes and could track them perfectly. But even if the camera didn't find the eyes, I could get sharp photos focused at the right place. Super. He's so cute. Look at that. It's perfectly focused on the eyes. You can see that again, the camera doesn't see both eyes. So sometimes it doesn't find the eyes. But that's all right, because it's still focusing right on his face. Again, from the distance and the eyes are tack sharp. Mind you, I was shooting at f5.3 with the 50 to 250 millimeter lens. And of course, uh, this lens doesn't have that shallow depth of field. So with such a lens, it's easier to get focused shots. You can see that the camera uh, is, is ping-ponging um, between the eyes, but that's okay because it, it's always trying to pick the eyes that, that is closest to me, or I can manually tell the camera which eye I want to focus on. This dog was an easy dog for the camera. Now let's see a more difficult subject. So his name is Bendagus and he, he is a very young dog. He's moving all over the place, but still the camera could find his eyes and focus on the eyes properly. And it recognized both eyes and I could select which eyes I wanted to focus on. Of course, the dog was sometimes moving so fast. It was very hard to track him, but when it stood still for a, for a fraction of a second, I could take shots and, and the focus was right um, on the eyes. So once the dog turns his face towards the camera, the camera has no problem picking up the eyes. When the dog came really, really close, it happened once that the, that the camera focused on the nose and not on the eyes. But then just a second later, the camera corrected itself and focused on the eyes and I could take this shot. And now let's move on to the third dog. And I think he was the most difficult subject. You will see why. So he's my hairdresser's dog and I was shooting him um, in, a, in a not so well lit room. And you can see that the camera found his eyes pretty well, although the dog is, is dark gray and his eyes are also dark gray, but the camera found the focus right on the eyes. Sometimes it was haunting a bit, but that's okay. And now again, it finds the eyes again, but the focus is hunting again. But if I just zoom back and forth a bit, the camera finds the dog again. So once the dog turns his face towards me, then the camera is able to immediately track and focus on the eyes. I had to use a, a longer shutter speed than, than I wanted to because there wasn't much light and I was shooting at f6, but still I could get focused shots. Now with some of the shots, the camera focused not perfectly on the eyes, 
but more on the nose but most of the shots was sharp on the eyes so the camera did a good job even with such a difficult subject you can see that this dog by the way his name is Dexter has has dark gray fur and his are, eyes are also dark gray or black Sexy. so it's not easy to pick up his eyes so Nikon says that this animal IAF function works with dogs and cats but of course I tested it on other animals as well I went to a nearby lake and uh, took photos of some some ducks and you can see that the camera find the ducks well but the camera didn't find their faces usually uh, the Nikon Z50 is usually focusing on the subject which is closest to the camera in this case it wasn't a big problem that the camera didn't find the dog's uh, face because the, the body of the dogs are so small and the dog was still in focus you can see here it's not focusing on the head sometimes it does sometimes it it doesn't but often the camera automatically focuses on the head so that is pretty good like here now it focuses on the head and on the eyes and I could get this shot. And now the geese, uh, again the camera had a very easy job picking up the subject. And here is the geese family and they are cleaning themselves. And the camera automatically focuses on the closest animal. I was quite far away from them. So basically uh, their, their heads and their body fell into the same focal plane so it didn't really matter for me if 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 the camera was focusing on the on the neck or on the body or on the head i could get sharp photos so to summarize it up i think nikon made a really really good job with this animal eye autofocus feature if you can see a dog's face or if you can see a cat's face the camera will will be able to to find their eyes and to focus right on the eyes it works really really well as you could see in the video i tested on three different dogs with different colors and even on, on a dark gray black dog it found the eyes really really well so that was my quick review of the nikon z50's animal eye autofocus feature i hope you enjoy this and by the way i would like to thank you for all your support and comments on my previous nikon z50 review i got so many useful information in the comments i am really really grateful for for all the people uh, helping out there so thank you thank you very much for watching my channel that was it for today i hope you enjoyed the video P please press please press <laughs> Please press, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna see you in the next one. All the best for you guys from the super sunny and super hot Hungary. See you soon.